<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about going back to school with COVID-19. I'm Lady Bounce. And, that face. and I am Ace Lake. <laughs> In that face, <laughs> that going everything. back to school, that going back to school. Oh, that face. Mm. <laughs> Me too. Oh, good. From, yes, from my own students and and for my daughter as well. It's just like, uh, I, don't, I don't. It's it's stressful. It's stressful. But we're gonna we're gonna go in and just dive right in here and get to this mindfulness minute of how to feel less overwhelmed. I don't know if any of y'all are feeling overwhelmed, but I am overwhelmed <laughs> okay it says i do not need to get everything done today i just need to make some progress i can take care of myself and my responsibilities today my good is compatible with the good of those around me. my good is compatible with the good of the world as you think about all the things you need to do today you may quickly feel overwhelmed but you have the various areas of your job responsibilities to consider just touch a little bit of everything that is really important today don't try to get it all done if you cannot just breathe deeply into your heart center and breathe blessings into whatever area of work you are focusing on and finally breathe blessings into all the people in your home and your workspace in the world then breathe blessings into all plants and animals too and wish for the good of all beings. So if you just take a minute, touch what you can, you can wish for the good of all beings. If you try to tackle it all a day, baby, <laughs> it may be a problem. That is our mindfulness minute. How to feel less overwhelmed. Don't try to take everything on all at once. Right, I've been doing, you know, little bit by little bit, as they say. I just went and got um, my daughter's uniform yesterday for her to go to school <laughs> this, this coming week. <laughs> I just and her shoes. And, yeah, and it was so crazy because like I knew the day was coming. I really did. And I was like, yeah, you've been doing virtual for a few weeks now. You'll have your uniform by the time you go in a building. Trust me, you'll, you'll be fine. And then I look up and I'm like, oh, that's this week. Like, yeah, yeah. Let me get you together. Well, see, see, and you, you, one of the ones I know are feeling overwhelmed because you already been back to work, plus your yes. podcasting, plus your momming, and plus you're doing community at work. So, so yeah, and pen palling our, our, our children, our youth that are um, incarcerated our way. So, yeah, you can, these things can slide past us like, oh, it's today. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she's, she's okay and, and she'll be ready and, and she's, uh, She's less fearful, and I guess this speaks to the the wonderfulness of, of children, if you feel. But she's not really, like, afraid, where I'm a nervous wreck. And I'm like, yes. well, I'm not sure what if, and, and, and she's like, it's going to be fine, Mom, really. Yes. Like, I'm not sure about that. So I really had to, like, in my mind, like, practice some, some mindfulness, like, just chill out, relax. It's, it's going to be what it's supposed to be. And even if it's not that, you can't fix it. So sometimes, okay. I'm to, you know, let it be a little bit. So I'm trying to let it be, but ooh, baby. Know that it's out of your control. That's where I was. I was like, why are they making people go back to school? It's, so, it's terrible, it's terrible. But then I have to remember Psalms 91. Like nothing is going to come near me. We're protected. We're covered. We're under the wings of the Most High God and all this good stuff. And Kaylin at school, like, it is what it is. Right. It's whatever. <laughs> like, I got my mask. I'm going to wash my hands. I got my sweat. I just want to get out this house and get to college. So you're right. Kids are more. We can learn a lot from them. We can learn a lot from them. Yeah, just, you know, in the realm of, of you know, having these teenagers and they like, just chill out, you know. But I think it's the nature of us as moms that we want to protect them from everything. And we always want to be that buffer when they're like, it's OK if I hit my head. And I'm like, no, you can't hit your head ever. they like, that's cool. I got Band-Aids. Like, ever. <laughs> 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 that is it. I think in my sense it might be that I'm a bit of a control freak, and I have to know when to to relinquish the reins of control. Like you know, some some things we just can't control. We can't. So yeah. yeah. So as you know, so as we uh we give advice to our parents, you know, I always 
when I meet people and I tell them about our show, I definitely tell them it's a journey that we have not arrived at whatever <laughs> it's supposed to be. So when I talk, you know, when I'm talking to people and I'm like, yeah, I got this podcast. I'm like, and you're joining us on a journey. Like it really is a journey. We don't, you know, we don't sit and pretend like we know it all. We have all of these answers and that we don't struggle because I think a lot of a lot of people relate to us because of that. Because I can say, hey, the mom in me is the mom in you and says, Come on. It's gonna be okay, even when it's not okay. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, like I work in a school and like our students are gonna be virtual, but our staff is in the building every day. And so mm -hmm. we have um, separate rules. So we'll be teaching live from our classrooms, but our yeah. principal is like, stay in your space don't go into somebody else's space without your mask on and if you really don't have to go into somebody else's space then don't we have ways to communicate throughout our building where you never have to go in the other person's room you know mm -hmm. so he's like utilize that as much as possible wash your hands you know be mindful of, of what you can do to to not catch it or not you know spread it mm -hmm. but our parents are still like well what happens if and well what about and I'm like we're not yeah. gonna worry about the what ifs right this minute. Yeah. Right yeah. now we we're okay. Yeah. Well, we just we just have to trust it, trust it, and, and do what we have to do. I, I was having a tough time with with uh, the the one that's about to be seventeen. The one that's about to be seventeen. My youngest son at the house. <laughs> we, we're sending him back, so I signed up to to have him do virtual all year. And they're like, once you get committed to that, that's what you're going to be doing. And I'm like, mm, you know, what if he wants to go to school? You know, they, they miss that interaction. They miss being around their, their peers and, and, and doing that. So it's tough. It's it, tough. it definitely is tough. And, and at this age yeah. that, you know, our kids are being, you know, 16, 17, at this moment in your life, your friends are everything and it's all you have. And so to not be able to be with your friends, be around your friends, it is taking an emotional toll you know mm -hmm. on our on our youth so we you know i've seen some people get really creative about how to get that social interaction you know for their children so for you moms out there that have discovered these wonderful ways to keep please your share in touch, right <laughs> please share for one but i commend you for doing that and recognizing that these kids are social and they do need their peers and it doesn't always have to be face to face you know there, there's other ways to get that interaction even though we we definitely prefer face to face mm -hmm. you know we just we we have to be a little more cautious you know we gotta be face to face we gotta be grateful for some things that we probably didn't like as much i know i didn't care for it i couldn't stand it i thought it was a devil and i wanted it destroyed which is Fortnite. but <laughs> <laughs> But because of Fortnite, our kids have already been predisposed to some serious interaction just with headphones and, and, and virtual uh, communicating, you know? So, you know, they, they already prepare for it. But another thing I know that, that is probably um, an issue for some is I know that I lost one, two, three, four streams of income um, wow. with COVID. So, um, that hurts. So I'm wondering about some of these moms and dads that are sending their kids back to school, missing that 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 financial uh, resource that they may have had that's not there no more. So is it making it more difficult for them to get school supplies? And 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 where are our resource places for them to get the things that they need if they need them? You know, right now. So that's something to be. Well, to I can for Dayton for for kids that go to Dayton public. They did give out ready packs. So mm -hmm. it was a Chromebook with a whiteboard and pencils and markers and crayons and stuff like that. Some charter schools um, have been giving out supplies, but not very many. Other mm -hmm. schools have made it so that their whole program is virtual and that those supplies are not needed. So That's I'm good. definitely thankful for the schools. Like my school has done that. We have made wow. everything that our kids are gonna do electronic and virtual. So at most they'll need you know pencil and paper if they want to take their own notes but we've even added a platform onto our google classroom where they can take notes live during the class uh, virtually you know as well but for mm -hmm. the, like the tutoring i'm doing for one of the families they they all go to dayton public so they all got school supplies with their mm -hmm. books 
But the other family, they go to a charter school and the charter school didn't give them anything. So wow. I provided them with ready pack supplies. That's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I have, as a teacher, I have access to, you know, you know, teacher shopping days and, and free mm -hmm. stuff. So the free stuff that I've gotten from, you know, different things throughout my, you know, tenure as an educator, I was able to put together, you know, notebook, pencils, markers, scissors, crayons, you know, basic supplies, you know, that that they would need. And so they're like, oh, well, thank you. You didn't have to do that. I'm like, I know, but you're, you know, you need it. So even if you don't need it, it's here just in case. Because you never know when that need is going to arise. You might be bored one day mm -hmm. and decide to just pull out the notebook and write. You know, we might create some Come writers out of this. You know, yeah. this whole situation, that would be awesome. And if we keep our post office together, we might actually send some letters to some people, some handwritten letters. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I still use snail mail. I know people laugh I at do. me all the time because I send stuff in the mail. I still, you know, pay bills through the mail or whatever, write checks. And people are like, you write checks? I'm like, yeah, because I don't want everybody in my bank account. I don't want everybody, you know, I know electronic funds is the way to go, but some things I'm just like, I'm not all the way ready to just give you access to my bank account yet. They trying to make us get ready though. They trying to make us get ready. Like everything is changing, everything is changing. Yeah. But um, yeah, so this back to school thing. What about hmm, our parents who have these new babies? Cause I went um, down to Dayton Christian School and I see that they are hiring. They are hiring, they need teachers, they need teachers, they need teachers, assistant teachers. And it's like, hmm, I didn't think about the daycare parents. Like, what about the the kids that are at home and mama's got to go to work? Um, I do see that for for those that need assistance getting um, daycare, like if they need Title 20 or something like that, assistance in paying for their daycare, that they can do that online now. So um, they can try that. But yeah, I don't have a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, and unfortunately, um, there isn't really a lot out there because of the the CDC rules and sanctions, you know, governing daycares where the ratio is a lot smaller. So for yeah. those, you know, parents of young Be babies, it is, it is rough, you know. You like me. Things. Yes. <laughs> So the only way for me to really get, unless I'm doing my home care, like say if I'm doing workshops only, uh -huh. if I'm doing virtual workshops, I can't get that daycare unless I work for the daycare center. You see what I'm saying? Right. So in that time, it's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's tough. It makes you really rethink things. It, 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 this back to school thing is really, really tough. And I know if it's tough for me, I'm wondering how tough it is for those who have three and four kids at home, school age kids at home. My kids are older and, right. and way younger. <laughs> so <laughs> You said older and way young. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm at. I don't know. I, I just I just think the best way to deal with this um, back to school situation is pretty much to keep a smile on your face. I mean, we have to just keep a smile on our face because we got to take it for what it's worth. I mean, it's out of our control. It really is out of our control. And this is a perfect time for people to take advantage of things like um, e-books and, and the Kindle and Google books and things like that and to teach yourselves. This is a time when we can really educate ourselves about a lot of things. It's a um, PBS network is amazing. I was listening to my nephew who's seven years old and he was talking to his four-year-old brother and they are telling me so much about these mosquitoes. Well, the female <laughs> goes and get the blood to feed her eggs and the eggs on the water. I'm like, where are you learning this stuff? Wild crabs. I'm like, okay, PBS, come through. So it's the perfect time to to see and, and hear and, and pay attention to what your child is learning. And even if you just got some extra stuff in there, give it to them. And uh, parents, please take advantage of, um, what is it called? Webmath.com. Webmath.com. Because if you're anything like me, math is hard. And webmath.com will give you an answer and give you the entire uh, breakdown of how they came to that conclusion. So it will really, really, really bless them. That's, Not, see, no, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, I was, as I listened to, to, to parents, you know, both, you know, complain and worry. And I, I had to like, first I was kind of getting a little, um, just getting a little angry in my spirit. Like these are your children. 
Like, what do you mean you can't educate? What do you mean they have to go to school? Like, you are your child's first teacher. Then I had to do some some soul searching and realizing that the complaints are coming out of fear because fear of the unknown, if your own um, schooling wasn't fun and it wasn't, yeah. you know, a nice experience for you, then maybe you didn't learn as much as you did or as learn, you, you know, go. learn as much as you could. So now you are fearful because you can't teach your own children. And that's where the complaining, you know, kind of comes in or like it comes off as complaining, but it's really mm-hmm. just fear. So yeah. for that, you know, for those parents, I say this, teach your child the things that you weren't taught in school. Teach them how to be good people. Teach them how to balance a checkbook, how to pay bills, how to grocery shop. There are a myriad of things that you can teach your child that they need to know for life that they aren't going to get in school anyway, that they aren't going to get from a textbook. You know yourself, you know, as a parent, if you're a parent who, you know, you've had low paying jobs or, you know, kind of low men on the totem pole, what they consider essential jobs where you have to go to work and you haven't had that break. Teach your child the things that you wish someone had taught you about the world of work that you didn't know so yeah that i wish i would have known then what i know now tell them now so that when right. then comes <laughs> they are fully prepared you know if they're not but not even fully prepared they're they're ahead of the curve they're ahead exactly. of the curve like i'm telling my son now to invest in gym you you're going to take a piece of your summer job money you're going to get a piece of that share of gym city market you're going to do that you're going to learn a little bit about a stock and get a piece of something right now you're going to do that because if I would have known then, who would, who knows where I would be now? You, you tell him right. You talk him right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're so silly. But yes, I mean, so yeah, I mean, if I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have a support system. I'm fortunate that I have a, you know, a job that is nonstop, you know, regardless of, of COVID. And I, I get, mm-hmm. you know, for, for those parents who don't have what I have or don't have, you know, the fortunate of that to, to kind of set them at ease. Like, it's okay. You don't have to know algebra, but you know how to multiply. You don't have to, you know, go in and know trigonometry. Like school is important, but why? If you think yeah. about before we yeah. ever had brick and mortar schools, before we were ever brought to this country and indoctrinated into this current way of life that we live, how did the kids learn anything? Yeah. You sat at the feet of the elders and they told them stories and they gave them these life lessons. You could do that. Girl, it sound like church to me. Sat them at the feet. Let's sit at the foot of the most. <laughs> Girl, I'm telling you, I've been spending my time. Before the brick and mortar, we were the church, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it is. Time. And it's also time to pull on your resources. Like, take a minute to sit down and actually think who is in your circle. If you got a whole circle of people and you can't call somebody and say, how do we do this long division problem? Whoop. We, we need to add somebody to the circle so, or, or scoot somebody over for a minute and put somebody else in that place. Because we, 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 it's plenty of people, I'm sure, around us that can support us in whatever it is that we need. We, we're all blessed in that way. Um, and use Facebook for, for something other than talking about how your day was or what we got at the store. You know, you, you can say, hey, I have a question. How do you, and I'm sure somebody will be glad to answer. Somebody will be glad to answer. Well, as my, I have this this one friend who's very very wise, and she often says, "You have not because you ask." Because not. you ask not. Come on, Bible. <laughs> so, if you ask, the answer will come. And even if the the answer doesn't come right away, maybe somebody else saw it and they passed it to somebody else who has an answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, because that's all it takes. It, it, you got to, um, as our bishop says, the year of the open mouth. Open your mouth. It, our yes. mamas taught us closed mouth don't get fed. You have to open your mouth and, and say what the need is. And and then if you don't get it, you might, you probably don't need somebody to give it to you. It's probably right in you. Just take that extra time because all we have right now is what time. Right. <laughs> So we got, we all got the same sentence with this case. We got the same sentence with this COVID-19 case. You got some time. We don't know how much yet. We just got some time. Right. We have to, we have to spend it wise. All our coins, spend them wisely. (laughs) (laughs) And you don't have to do everything right now. You know, so as you talked about in the mindfulness minute of feeling less overwhelmed, you know, tackle what you can right now and then the rest, leave it on the table. 
you know, it See, that spoke to my spirit. Yeah, it always reminds me of that the old question that came from the story: How do you eat an elephant one bite, one at, bite a time? at a time? See, I still have, I've been looking at everybody when I'm driving. It's, y'all got some pretty yards. They so pretty. I said, oh, they house must be so clean because they done got some extra time. They, they done cleaned their house so good. They didn't came outside and start cleaning up. You hear me? <laughs> so I'm like, not me. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. So if it makes you feel any better, my yard is not done. My basement is still not done. And my garage ain't either. But I tell you what, it will be because I'm doing a little bit at a time. And I got a college kid just left. I might even have my own room again. You hear me? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> through work and studio so, but take your time because i was focusing my energy on other stuff if you have other stuff more important to do more pressing work get that done don't neglect what must be done like one of the things that must be done right now we have to make sure that our babies are prepared to 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 get the education that they need we need to make sure that they at least ready to wake up at eight in the morning and log on right. because we might not have time to keep every day get up get up get up no 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 they need to be ready to be up at eight o'clock. They need to treat this as if they are still in that classroom, still in that building. Don't let them get lazy. Don't let them just think like, okay, let me surf the web right now. No, baby, focus. Because this is still their life. This is still their life and it will affect them um, if they don't get the the education that they need. They, they need that. So yeah, we got some work to do. We got some work to do. I agree. I think the, you know, like you said, most of the work comes from from our mindset and how we think about it, how the, you know, the approach that we take to it says a lot about the outcome. So like you said, you have that kid, you know, get up in the morning at eight o'clock, set their own alarm, you know, yes. if need be, lay out their clothes the night before. No, you don't have to wear a uniform, but you need to have a shirt on. You need to look yeah. presentable. Yeah. You know, as if you are in school, you know, I didn't even think of that. Who's logging on with no shirt on? Come on now. <laughs> I've seen it happen. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and I can imagine because they at home. You in your pajamas, you happy. Oh, no, 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 no. Pray. You're a little <laughs> too comfortable. But when you're yeah. logging on and that video is on, you need to look presentable. Now, we don't care it's what you look like from the Calm waist down. down. But from the waist <laughs> up, I at least want you to look presentable. You know, because yeah. you, you play how you practice. So... <laughs> This is practice for, you know, for real life. And who's to say that this may not be our world from here on out? Okay. So okay. let's let's prepare for for the now, which may become our future. Be now. Yeah. This is this is this may be. I always I always used to think 2020, not even 2020, year 2000 would be like the Jetsons, where our cars would be flying and we would have a Rosie in the kitchen and a roo roo dog, you know. <laughs> but that didn't happen. But now here we are kind of living in that spaceship, living in our own personal spaceships, our own little bubbles, our own little rockets, um, and still trying to, to maintain. So I guess in a, in a sense, we are there. But this is really, really, this time is really, really, uh, teaching forcing us to um, come together to come together so even though we got to stay apart which is strange right you gotta make right. it work we gotta make it happen but one of the, the, together the best things apart. that that we can do you know during this time is to keep practicing that self-care so with that being said what are we yes. doing this week what are we doing this week for self-care love it know this for self-care you may not be able to do anything about a situation today when that happens accept it and forget it as we were saying in the beginning of the podcast some things may be out of your control accept it and forget about it <laughs> the sun will still rise tomorrow the moon will still come up the air the wind will still blow and you god willing will still be here to, to face another day you can deal with it another day accept it and forget it but now now you like that you like that <laughs> we have to move on over to something that i not only like i love and that is our ticka, 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 ticka. Ooh. <laughs> finally i get to shut this mouth brain science <laughs> <laughs> all right so this week for our brain science we kind of go a little bit of a different direction i'm going to give you eight parenting tips for virtual learning because this is something that's new to us all i'm going to help you out and make it a little bit easier the 
first things first, um, invest in improving your teacher and family partnership. If you didn't have good, you know, a good relationship with your children's teachers last year, you were busy, you were, you know, irritated, whatever, whatever, put that aside this year and be a true partner to the school. As teachers, we are struggling and navigating through it just like you are. So cut us some slack, smile a little bit, and in the same regard, we will do the same for you. But partnering with your child's teacher is the most important thing. Because even if you're struggling with something or you need help with something, that teacher is gonna be there to be that resource. They might need you too. Um, number two, find the sweet spot for the amount of learning time. So when we post this episode, I'm gonna post, there's an actual time chart that says based on age, how much time your child should spend learning before they take a brain break. And that's really important. And it's based on the age of your child. Of course, you, you're not gonna have your six year old sitting on Google Meet or on Zoom for three straight hours because brain science wise, that is a detriment to a child's brain. So we'll make sure we post that. Use intentional breaks to improve learning. So if your child has 10 or 15 minutes between classes, dance. Turn on some music and dance. Do a TikTok dance. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just an outlet before they have to log back on and be you know, inundated with more information. You've got to give time for brain breaks. Draw a picture, read a story. You know, whatever, whatever makes your brain go, because <sighs> our brains have to breathe too. Um, learn to look at screen time differently. So if your child is on, you know, the computer all day long learning, you may want to put some space in between school and them playing a video game or, you know, playing on their phone or being on social media. Your eyes and your brain need a break from all of that UV blue light that comes from our computer screens. Go outside, take a walk, take a nature walk, a mindfulness walk. Watch the things in your neighborhood. The squirrels and the birds have no idea what coronavirus is. And, and if you notice, they live in their best life because they're not worried about all of these things. So definitely take those breaks. Um, establish a routine for predictability. Have your child wake up at the same time every day. Have them get dressed, brush their teeth, have breakfast, just like it's a normal school day. And as you do that, when they get into the routine of, oh, I have to be on this class at eight, I gotta be on this class at 10. When you set the precedent, they will follow you. And then it, if it you know turns out that you have to leave and go to work, you've already established that schedule and that routine. So they're gonna stay on it. They're probably gonna remind you, mom, I can't talk to you right now, I gotta log in. You're like, wait a minute, did you just tell me to be quiet so you can go to school? So, you know, we have to set it up and then let them, you know, carry you forth. Then um, incorporate rewards. You know, let your kids know, I'm proud of you. This is very different. It's different for all of us, but you're sticking to it. Why don't we go out for ice cream? Or why don't we go take a drive? Or some tangible thing that they want. This is a perfect way to make them work for it, if you will. Yeah. You know, you do four hours of school, show me where you turned in your assignment and the teacher gave you feedback. Yeah, you can get those shoes. Yeah, you can get this latest gadget or, you know, something like that. <laughs> and the biggest tip of all is give yourself some grace. Give the teachers grace, give your child grace, but give yourself the grace to know you don't have to know it all right now. Don't have to figure it out right now. Control the things that you can control and everything else, baby, let it fly. <laughs> forget about it forget about it <laughs> exactly accept it and forget it fix what you can and leave everything else on the table it might not be your job to fix it it might be on somebody I, else i just love where you said our brains need to breathe too yes like yes take that time take do your self-care do your self-care yes please yes. do your yes. self-care i like it but final yes. thoughts we gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can tell I had a little, a couple more hours of sleep. So. <laughs> so I let my brain breathe, I'm excited. Yeah, we are gonna be all right, y'all. So don't forget to share any of your tips under the video when you see it. Yes, and follow <laughs> us on social media, Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, Everywhere. wherever you get your favorite podcast. Keep playing with mm -hmm. us and we will see you next week. We out of here. We out of here. <laughs>